if you think that this thing is a GPS, please raise up your hands. No. Pretty much everyone. But you're not completely right. This is a car navigation system. And GPS is the name of the American satellite navigation system that contributes to make it work. But I, I don't blame you. Huh? We all got used to call it a GPS thanks to, I believe, very good marketing from our, our American colleagues. Now, few, how many of you know the name of the European counterpart? You see? The Americans are much better at marketing. Eh? Could you give the name? Galileo, correct. You made me happy. <laughs> GPS and other large-scale space programs are normally reserved to the most powerful nations as a tool for supremacy. Today, I would like to, to share a personal opinion on why I believe that the European Union can also develop such uh, programs, but with a different goal in mind, which is to ensure peace and drive prosperity. So, let us start to look at the GNSS landscape. So we have a GPS, which delivers both a military and a civilian service. NATO member states and a few others, they have access to the military part of it. We have as well uh, GLONASS, which is built by Russia for more or less the same reasons. And so is doing China with its uh, Beidou system. So if we have uh, GPS, full access to it, partly access to GLONASS and, uh, and Beidou, and all of this for free, why do we need Galileo? Why do we need this um, uh, civilian-run uh, GNSS? It's a good question. <laughs> and I have both a defensive and a progressive argument for you to explain why we need such a system. So our society and even our military, they are addicted to satellite navigation. We all got used to the fact that we know exactly where we are all the time. And even the economy is heavily dependent on, on navigation. We talk about more than 6% of the GDP. Can we, in Europe, consider that our access to foreign GNSS is good enough? Do you trust this gentleman <laughs> to be tomorrow as generous as they are today? It reminds me of an old friend of mine who was so happy to use his neighbor's Wi-Fi for free until they put a password to it. It's like that. You know you need it, so you get your own. Call it autonomy, if you like. I call it common sense. I have also a strong progressive argument. While we are developing our own system, why not striving at delivering better services? And this is what we are doing. Galileo is a reality. Since last year, it delivered its first services to the people. So if you have a smartphone with Galileo inside, on top of GPS, you will get a better position position, location, uh, accuracy in, in the city, especially, and in between the high buildings. This is because GPS and Galileo, they can work seamlessly, so the combination of the two lead to a higher number of satellites in view. Now, if you're a sailor, a kite surfer like me, a paraglider, a mountain biker, holding a personal location beacon will help save your life much faster. Indeed, Galileo complements other satellites to locate you in less than 10 minutes, wherever you are in the world. And this is instead of up to four hours, as it was like in the past. And by the end, by the end of 2018, all new vehicles in the EU will be equipped with the e emergency sy system enhanced by Galileo. And e will save lives. In case of an accident, wherever you are in Europe, the closest emergency rescue team will be automatically called. Now, on top of these defensive and progressive rationals, 
I have also a third argument, which is maybe the most powerful one and certainly the most emotional one, and one that I don't share very often because it's not easy to convey. So I will give it a try. The real beauty of Galileo is about cooperation to achieve a goal which is higher than what the individual partners can do alone. I've been working for 18 years on the Galileo program. It's the largest European space project. At the beginning, many people believed we could never make such a complex system in a non-military-like organization. And yes, we had the serious difficulties, but yet I believe the complexity comes more from the fact that we in Europe need to take into account the different views of the 28 member states rather than the civilian nature of the system. And sometimes, during the long and complex consultation process we do in Europe, something unexpected occurs. I was the chairman of a working group who was in charge of finding ways how to make Galileo signals compatible with GPS. So the challenge was to maintain the ambition to deliver a first-class GNSS for the civilian while complying with the military requirements, mainly driven by GPS. But based on existing technology, there was no solution to this problem. You either get the high performance for the civilian or the military requirement, not both. So the member states, they started to split apart around this dilemma and under political pressure from the Americans. But Lionel from Belgium, Gunther from Germany, Laurent from France, José Angel from Spain and Jean-Luc from France and a few others, they had the technical skills to solve this diplomatic channel. It took them several months of joint work to develop the necessary technology and they found this signal here in blue, which even exceeded the initial expectation. And the beauty and challenge to define and defend a common European progressive position led to an innovation, a truly European innovation. And there are many more such stories uh, like that in the Galileo program. And be sure you cannot find them in the books. So yes, developing a European GNSS will mean going through many obstacles like these ones. But in all these situations, the member states, the program organization, the women and the men behind, sitting around the same table, are discovering their shared responsibility. And the spirit of compromise, in the good sense of it, the empathy, and from time to time even innovation, magically apply. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see these two euro coins? This is how much the system costs every citizen in the EU each year. And in return, you do not only get the autonomy and independence, the better location on your smartphone, more lives saved in the oceans, in the mountains or in the roads, you also get jobs and prosperity in Europe that can be valued three to five times the initial investment. But most of all, we have demonstrated the value added of being Europeans. 28 member states can work together to achieve things way bigger than what they could do alone. And the additional effort to build consensus translates into a more solid, a more sustainable final result. Thank you very much. Use Galileo. You deserve it.